and welcome to The Big Match Revisited, a chance to look back at the way football was televised more than four decades ago. This edition was shown at the end of October 1976. Settle down for some football nostalgia with host and commentator Brian Moore. And welcome again to the big match. No shortage of goals and good action again this week, including a goal that I think you're going to be talking about all week as we bring you three games from yesterday's league programme. Main match, Queen's Park Rangers against Sunderland. And looking at that game for us, England and Queen's Park Rangers skipper Jerry Francis, who's of course not played this season because of a back injury. It's a game we're going to support with goals all the way as Leicester City meet Arsenal in another first division match. And from the second division, Luton Town against Southampton. Your letters too, bringing back memories of the day that George Best scored six goals in a cup tie at Northampton. But first we move off to West London, to Loftus Road, the home of Queen's Park Rangers, where the visitors of bottom club Sunderland Rangers, stimulated by their midweek draw in Czechoslovakia, it's the same team in fact, but for one place. Parks in goal, Clement, McClintock, Webb and Gillard, Hollins, Masson and Eddie Kelly, who comes in, he couldn't play in uh, Czechoslovakia, he was ineligible, Bowles, Gibbons and Thomas up front. And here is Eddie Kelly. Strange to see him, really, in anything other than an Arsenal shirt. And here, too, is Don Givens, upset recently by barracking by the Rangers crowd. He's even thought about a move. As for Sunderland, not one member of this side played in the 73 Cup final now. And now, of course, Bob Stoko has resigned as well. Siddle in goal, Ashurst, Clark, Holton and Bolton. Raoul, Towers, Train and Foggen. Greenwood and Lee with Henderson there substitute. They spent a lot of money and a lot of time looking for big names. Jim Holton on loan from Manchester United. Also, of course, there's Roy Greenwood, £140,000 buy from Hull City, and Bob Lee, a record for the club, £200,000 from Leicester, and two men in the crowd from crisis clubs. There's West Ham's Ron Greenwood leaning over there. They play Rangers this week, and Sunderland caretaker manager Ian McFarlane. So Rangers in the hoops, get us away. They're attacking the goal to our left in their blue and white hoops, white shorts. Sunderland today discarding their red and white stripes there in an all-yellow strip. And Sunderland rooted at the bottom of the table. Only one win all season, and that was in the League Cup against Luton. They haven't won in the league yet. Jim Holton, number six. And a throw to Rangers. Themselves with only one point from their last uh, three games. Beaten by Norwich and by Arsenal. But with that marvellous 3-3 draw in Bratislava in midweek. To sustain them. There's Hollins. Having a tussle there with Raoul. Alf Gray, the referee. Played back for Thomas. The little chip. Oh, Givens missed the chance there. Well, that really was an opening there for Queen's Park Rangers. Now a chance for Thomas to take it up again. Foggen coming back, so is Raoul. Ashurst facing him. Space inside for Hollins. Simple ball to Gillard. Hollins again, no tackling coming there. And a shot that was only a yard wide. Well, the Sunderland defence held off badly there. And when the ball came back into Hollins, they held off and gave him a chance to really almost pick his spot. Masson. Givens allowing it go to Bowles. And away goes Givens. Now, can he silence those critical fans now? He can't. And it's a free kick right on the edge of the area. Bowles is furious there, arguing with the referee, claiming that that was inside the box. I must say my immediate view was that it was inside, but Alf Gray, the referee, said outside is where the first challenge was made. And so outside the area, it's got to be. Gibbons was certainly clear there. And it was the referee's view that it was outside that Sunderland penalty area. So there's the Sunderland wall. Can Rangers create something from this dangerous position? Asson and Hollins are the men standing over. Sybil is the man who is wondering where it's going to strike him. It 
comes to Masson, it comes to Gillard, a free shot and a brilliant save. Well, the short touch from the free kick. Finally allowed it to go to Gillard, who had the space for a left foot shot. Hit it well, superb piece of goalkeeping by Barry Siddall. Played a little too short there by Givens. It gave Clement no chance at all, and it gives Sunderland a chance as Towers now finds Foggart. Greenwood in the middle. And down goes Phil Fox. The ball wanted to be angled back just a little more there by Foggart, and Greenwood could have been in with a brilliant chance of scoring. As it was, the save was made by Phil Fox. Now Masson. Bowles is up there, but uh, Clark did a good job there for Sunderland, and here he is again. Big man who went to uh, Sunderland as a part of the deal that took Dave Watson from Sunderland to Manchester City. Greenwood offside. Three. And he wants to say where they're going. Barry Siddle. Well, he's got four in the wall. And Eddie Keller's going to join them as well. Still not happy where the wall is, is Siddle. And he's dancing about there on his line. Masson leaving it this time for Hollins to drive it through the wall. And somehow he got there. McClintock. Well, Tony Tower said, how on earth did that get through the wall? But in fact, Hollins blasted it through the wall. It just nicked the wall, in fact, and took that deflection that uh, fooled Siddall. He got his hand to it. McClintock was right in there to finish it off. Frank McClintock, the scorer. And the score now, Queen's Park Rangers 1, Sunderland 0. Thomas. Ashurst going after him and sticking to him well. Balls. A little bit of skill. Just look how he shields that ball. A little touch. Turn it again now for Gibbons. Couldn't quite gather it up though. McClintock in there powerfully with the header. Now it'll come for Thomas. Well, he's glided past that challenge by Rao. And he's got a corner. away this time Kelly is there try and turn it back Raul didn't know where it was Masson tried to get in and Hollins racing back to retrieve it Webb as his life depended on it Thomas better stuff from Rangers now encouraged by that goal and McClintock diving in again no, it was Clement that time, very nearly getting a second goal. Here's McClintock, way back there, cutting it out well before Lee could go on. Tremendous break there by the big number two, Dave Clement, very nearly getting in there with a spectacular diving header. Well, 
Now, what's he going to do? Well, he's going to be beaten, except that there's a free kick. A foul by Tony Towers, presumably. Jim Holton arguing with the referee about that one. A foul on Stan Bowles, giving uh, Queen's Park Rangers another free kick right on the edge of the area. As you can see, it's away to the right. As the kicker will look at it. Three men in the wall, four now. There's Hollins there lined up with Masson. Ready to take this one. A little chip this time to Gibbons. Tipped over. They vary their free kick so well. And that time it was the little chip, which Gibbons met so well. And Siddle did all that was asked of him. So, another corner. Masson driven lower this time towards Webb. And the whistle have gone for some pushing, which gives Sunderland a chance of... Uh, a bit of relief. With about three minutes to go to half-time. McClintock going across quickly there, but Train beat him to it. And now an interesting situation as Rangers get back quickly and Lee brought down. No foul given. McClintock. That'll be a little too close to Clark, but he slipped and bowls it on his way. Gibbons waiting in the middle. Clark's recovered well. Bowles nicking it in here to Masson. And they still can't get it away. Gibbons now to Thomas. Gillard's coming up fast as well. That's an alternative. We're in injury time at the end of the first half. <laughs> now, Gillard with a chance really to have crossed it there. Well, he might have a better chance still. Hitting it straight at Tony Towers, though. And you get the feeling that maybe Rangers didn't quite make the best of that opportunity, but the whistle's gone for half-time, and they're leading, and they'll be happy with that. But that goal scored after the free kick when the Sunderland wall was demolished by Holland's free kick. And Frank McClintock, following up quickly, was able to hit it into the roof of the net. So, so far, so good for Queen's Park Rangers. So far, the same old story for Sunderland there behind. A half-time score, then, here at Loftus Road. Queen's Park Rangers 1, Sunderland 0. We'll be right back with the second half. Welcome back to Loftus Road. Sunderland now attacking the goal to our left in the all-yellow strip. And they are a goal down, the goal scored by Frank McClintock in the first half. Sunderland, in fact, have only scored seven goals in the last nine games, so it's a, a fairly formidable task that they're facing here now. But here's Tony Towers. Rangers, who played very well indeed, in patches particularly, Back there by Greenwood and Gillard. Oh, that must have deflected into touch. Here's Gibbons. While he's been pulled back there by Holton, it has to be a free kick. Which Gillard will take. Leach, you can see sitting on the bench there, second from the left as we look at it. Substitute. Gillard then with the free kick. Floated in towards Don Givens. Just nicking it on there, but... Bolton able to turn it back to Sibyl. Webb just dutching it down to Hollins. And here's Hollins again. Gillard having a, quite a go at Greenwood there. And the ball falling now to Gibbons. Here's Bowles. <laughs> Kelly playing it nice and wide there. A good skillful pass there to Dave Thomas. Now, will he take on Ashurst as he has so often in the first half? Onto the right foot. A low shot just wide of the post. 
He's always looked dangerous doing that. He certainly got the measure of the Sunderland number two today. Turned inside on this occasion, got it onto his favourite right foot, and just cracked it maybe a yard, no more wide. Raul. Good challenge and a well timed one by Gillard. Masson. What about that for a ball? Now, can Givens get there before Holden? He can't. Gillard. Thomas. Dave Clement. The balls again. It's Fogger. Bowles, past one, past another. Not onto that left foot, surely. Well, that was bound for the goal, except that it hit John Hollins. Well, he glided past one, and the crowd enjoyed it. He glided past another, and he got it onto that left foot and let fly only to hit his own number four. Thomas after this one. Oh, just wide again. He's bound to make one of those count very soon. From that quick throw, he outwitted them all. And Thomas really let that go. And again, just wide. Clark. Well, he got the better of Hollins there. There's Thomas back again. Well, this time he might try and do a little too much. But there's support for him. Gillard. It's a dangerous game they're playing, trying to run it out of their own penalty area. And here's Towers. Bolton. Driven low and had to be saved well. Bolton caught that ball. The Parks didn't do badly with it either. Gibbons again getting up well. Now Masson. Now Bowles. Clement didn't fall for him. Towers. Morgan. McClintock closing quickly on him, but he's found train. Webb. Well, the range is a little bit lucky there, and Masson prepared to ride that luck until he comes up against Jeff Clark. It's a fairly muddled game at the moment. Sunderland really not playing all that well, and Rangers at the moment very rarely looking capable of adding to that one goal. Certainly, they don't, uh, the home side don't look in any great danger. But I wonder what Ashurst can do with this. Holton's come up again. Greenwood's made a run towards the near post, and Holton got the header in. And my goodness, it almost went home. Well, after saying that they didn't really look to be in great danger, Holton got what virtually was a free header, nodded it down, Parks went scrambling across his line, the ball hit the post and he somehow just managed to keep it out. Well, that might spur Rangers on a bit. But first, they've got to get away from this corner situation. Sunderland have piled a few people forward, including Clark. And it's another corner. No, it's not. The ball not out of play yet. But now they can come away. And Thomas, the man, probably the fastest of all. And Bowles onside. Siddles come roaring out of his goal. Now what will Bowles do? Onto the left foot, he'll hope. No, onto the right foot. 
That's there, that's two, and that's Bowles. That's got every man off his seat as the ball flashed from one end to the other when Sunderland lost possession. When Sunderland lost possession, it found its way to Thomas. He played it sensibly the first time. Bowles was on it like a flash. Turned them one way, turned them the other, and found the shot that made it 2-0. Well, he's getting in the habit of scoring goals, is Sam Bowles. But here's Greenwood. Now, can he pull one back for Sunderland? Right across the face of that goal, and suddenly the game has really sprung to life. Eleven goals now, Stan Bowles has scored this season. Eight of them in Europe. Train. Goal kick. Well, if Sunderland had felt they got a finger hold on this game, all the time it was 1-0. I think they must realise now that it's a pretty desperate plight that they're in. They're not a great goal-scoring side. Seven in the last nine games, and they've got to find two to get a point now. complaining he was being harassed unfairly by Holton and now Thomas and now Gillard play on said the referee that's not a bad looking cross there towards Tom Gibbons the header just over overlap well there Gillard on that far side found a good cross always tempting the goalkeeper a little bit and uh, Gibbons got up well just off the mark. So Joe Bolton for Sunderland. Cut out well by McClintock. Clement. Bob Lee. Well, here's uh, Tony Towers. Ashurst made a good run, and Bob Lee on the far side, almost knocked it in. Good break by Sunderland, a very good one in fact. Tony Towers at the heart of it, and Bob Lee came very close there to getting his, uh, his first goal for Sunderland, indeed his first goal of the season. So 2-0. It remains, and Sunderland are bringing on their substitute. Gary Rowell is going off. And uh, Mick Henderson coming on. So here's Henderson. And there's Gary Rowell has gone off. Ian McFarland doing some readjustments there. Ray over here. So Ray Train has got to play on the right side of the midfield now. Does help to look read occasionally. Clark. Green with a good turn. Oh, and he needed a good save. That might just have floated it under the crossbar. Nice turn there by uh, Roy Greenwood. Well judged uh, shot. Parks tipping it over. So a corner then with two minutes to go to Sunderland. Henderson with it. Good safe catch, though, by Phil Parks. And the long kick that will send them chasing off again. Bowles versus Bolton. And the Sunderland defender well in control there. Clark. Holton. Come for Clark again. Towers. And train. Good ball. Foggen. 
Lee again trying to get up there and get a little bit of uh, room above David Webb. But there wasn't much to spare and there hasn't been all afternoon. Towers to Bolton. Hershey playing out the formality of the last few seconds now as Foggan finds Henderson. And Hollins, oh, and he almost turned that away straight at Foggan. And Foggan almost hit it without knowing what he was doing into the net. And he must have kicked awkwardly as he tried to reach that ball. Hollins really not a very good clearance by him. Straight out to Foggan, and Foggan just not really knowing what he was doing, but it's wide. And now Kelly played down the wing for Bowles. Referee looking at the watch again. Masson this time, but again, Towers was there, took it nicely from Greenwood, Bowles now beaten by Towers, back to Siddall, as the final whistle goes, two points for Queen's Park Rangers, more trouble for Sunderland at the foot of the table, a goal in the first half by Frank McClintock, but the game, there's Frank McClintock, the game really lit up by that magnificent piece of uh, Bowles artistry in the second half that produced the second goal. So, a final scoreline then here at Loftus Road. Queen's Park Rangers 2, Sunderland 0. Well, I think everyone there yesterday agreed that Rangers deserved to win, and many of them, of course, would have echoed the growing cry that Stan Bowles now really has established himself as a strong England candidate. That's something I want to talk to Rangers and England skipper Jerry Francis about in a moment. But first of all, Jerry, Sadly, you've not played this season. A trapped nerve in the back, which I presume is still pretty painful. Um, well, it's not too bad now, Brian. Um, basically, um, it's about 80% better, and I'm just waiting for the last part of it to uh, get better. And um, maybe I might start training next Monday. You've been to a whole string of specialists. Uh, I gather that rest is the only thing, though. Is it that but, uh, this is this is what we come down to now? Is just uh, rest. I've been resting for five weeks, doing nothing, yeah. which is. Uh, very difficult. And you say you, you, you might start training when? Maybe on Monday, but it depends um, what the doctor says on Monday. Yeah, it'd be very, very slow training anyway, very, very slight. What's the earliest uh, we could expect to see you wearing a Rangers or an England shirt again? Well, I, I don't really think that I can, can actually state a time because um, once I start training, we've got to see what reaction uh, it brings out on the back. And um, if it's bad, then I'll stop again. But mm. if it's good, um, I should go on training, so uh, we'll just have to wait and see. It must have been very frustrating for you, but at least it's given yeah. you a chance to have a good look and a detached look at your teammates. What do you think of QPR yesterday, for example? Well, I thought basically there was only one side in it, really. Um, uh, Sunderland um, looked uh, what they are at the moment, a team that's struggling at the bottom of the first division. And um, once uh, QPR got the first goal, I felt that they could have got more than two, but as it was, they only got two. But they played very well in patches, very well. Yeah. In fact, one of the things that's always a delight to look at Queen's Park Rangers is their variety of free kicks. They spend so much time on dead ball situations. There are a couple of little examples coming out now perhaps you'd like to tell us about. Yeah, here's a perfect example of, of getting rid of the spare man by playing the ball to Don Masson to Ian Gillard in the shot, you know. John Holland's got plenty to say for it. I think he wants yeah, Don Masson to get on with it. Yeah, I think that's just trying to... Um, get people unaware yeah. and Don knows exactly what he's going to do, do and Don Gibbons is going to make a late run here and get in the header. And the goalkeeper makes a good save there. It's amazing how in, in football so highly organised as it is in the first division, how many goals come from uh, dead ball situations? Well I think this is, um, it's getting more and more um, certain that goals are, are going to be hard to score and uh, from free kicks and dead ball situations, um, this is a chance for teams to score goals and you see more and more goals scored from dead ball situations and um, the harder you work at free kicks and you're always having to change them whether television might show <laughs> bits and pieces or whatever you're having to really change. do you consciously do that but oh, you know course, if, you, yeah. if, if you've been caught out on television oh or... certainly I mean uh, we used to do one if you remember when Terry Van used to flick it over the wall to himself yes um, and we scored so many goals like that until television uh, pinpointed it 
then after that I was always very close to him up to the end of the wall, so you have to change free kicks accordingly. You know. And yet, curiously enough, your first goal yesterday came without any great sophistication at all. It really was no. just a blast yeah. through a very badly formed yeah. Sunderland wall, wasn't it? Yeah, the Sunderland wall broke here, in the middle. Looks like it's ready to break there, doesn't it? Yeah. I thought he was going to put it over the top to uh, Eddie Kelly, actually, flick it over, but uh, they broke badly, and the goalkeeper must have saw it late. It got a deflection there, and he couldn't quite hold it. And uh, I didn't think Frank McClintock could run that fast, actually, but he must have <laughs> Webby must have pushed him. But uh, he knocks it away well, very quick in, and uh, took it very well. Good opportunist goal. You've taken a fair while to get into your stride ranges this season, though, haven't you? Um, yeah, um, I think in the league we've had some very disappointing results. Uh, we lost to Norwich, but we didn't play particularly well. We lost to Everton. Is, is it maybe a backlash from the disappointment of getting so close last season? I think um, possibly the first two games, Everton and West Ham, could have been. Although we were unfortunate at West Ham, but... Um, to start again, 42 league games, it's a long way yeah. after being so near and possibly the first game against Everton could have been. You know. yeah. Sunderland, we've said, worked hard, but I think at the moment they need more than hard work and yet with their dead ball situations, going back to that theme, they very nearly caught you out once as well. Yeah, I think there was about three or four isolated cases that, um, from dead ball situations. A uh, couple of corner kicks in the first half and a couple of free kicks where we were a bit, a bit lax in Ashurst. our marking. Yeah. I think he got away from Don. I don't know whether he might have pushed him, but uh, he got away from him a little bit there and got in a good header, which uh, was very unfortunate. And I think we scored from this, actually, straight from this uh, yes, you situation. Yes, we did. Which which brings me nicely onto the fellow who scored it. Yeah. Stan Bowles, and a great cry for him to be an England player, with Italy in mind as well. You're the England skipper, although, of course, you haven't played yeah. this season, as you said. Do you see Bowles for England? Well, I don't think it's been any secret that... Um, that I've always said to what a great player Stan is, and I've played with him for five years now. And um, he would most certainly help me in the England side, and uh, I know that I could help him like we have at Rangers. And um, I've always said all along that I think he should be in the England side, but as I say, I don't pick the side. You see, people talk about his attitude. Now, you, you are closer to him than most people. They wonder about his attitude, whether it's right. Well, his attitude on the field is right. I, I've never had any problems with his attitude on the field whatsoever. He's, um, he hates to lose. He's a good competitor. And... Um, it's only times when sometimes uh, a few problems off the field has affected his game on the field. And that's the only time that I've got to worry as a captain. But um, uh, the way he's been behaving and the way he's been playing over the last um, three or four months has been excellent. And um, I, I can't see that uh, there's any problems with Stan whatsoever. Uh, let, me, let me try and put you on the spot. Would you, would you pick him for the game in Rome? I would pick him, yeah, if I was manager of the England team. But... Um, I'm not, you know, so uh, <laughs> there you go. I tell you what, let's, let's, let's look at his goal yesterday because, as I say, I think it's one that people will talk about for many, many days to come. And it was somehow typical of the man, wasn't it? But it was a lovely breakout by a yes. lovely touch by Eddie Kelly. Yeah, it's a good, good early ball from Dave Thomas, a tremendous Superb. early ball. And I think Stan's still in his own half. It will show Yeah, Ian McFarlane wondered whether he was offside, but no. looking, at, I mean, Stan is fractionally well, that, inside the half that there. That ball's travelled 30 yeah. yards, so he's definitely onside there. Yeah. And there's also a man to the left of him. Now here, I thought he was going to chip it because the goalkeeper come and made a mistake and he could have chipped it over his head there. And also Eddie Kelly was coming in on the left out of the picture and I thought he might have knocked it in first time. But uh, once he went in this close, I knew what he was going to do, pretend to hit it, come inside. And he knocks him away all the time in five side games. It's a great goal. Cool. I'd love to see him get one like that in Rome if he had the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Jerry, I hope very soon that you're getting the opportunity of getting back into action again. And I think fans everywhere, whether they're QPR fans or not, would echo that. Thank Thanks you very so much, much for coming today, though, Jerry. Well, our next match today takes us into the second division for the match between Luton Town and Southampton. Luton started the season well, but they've uh, dropped away a bit. Southampton started poorly, and they've started to pick up a bit. The match yesterday was covered by Anglia's cameras, the commentators Jerry Harrison, with Luton Town in the darker shirts. Williams down the wing, this is McDougall. Slipped. Husband wins it, but that's Holmes, and Holmes is away. In the middle is McDougal on the far post. Here comes McDougal. Oh, what a good effort! A fine break and run. As Holmes scampered down the left hand side, McDougal was really racing in on the right hand side. He couldn't quite get there, but he really grew a couple of inches to get the chance. Throw into Southampton. Steve Williams to Shannon. Williams gone for the return. Good ball, and here comes McCalliog. McDougall. And Faulkner gets it away. It's still not clear, though. Shannon, a good run. He goes down. There's a penalty. He went down pretty easily, but the referee was right behind him. 
Well, he picked up the panic clearance from Faulkner. Controls quickly, tries to bypass Buckley. He goes down, the referee is five yards away, points straight to the spot, and that's what it's going to be. And David Peach is preparing to take it. Peach. Oh, he got a hand to it. He did very well, but not well enough. 1 0. Well, he guessed right as he side footed it. He couldn't quite get down fast enough. And Southampton go into the lead. Good long kick from Montgomery. With Dougal, in goes Buckley. Down goes Williams. And we're going to have a free kick. And it looks like a booking. Something was about to come out of the back pocket anyhow. McCallyog's chip. Well covered again by Paul Future. But a dispute now between McCallyog and Brian James. The kick has got to be retaken. So Paul Future's good work all in vain. It's McCallyog and Peach on the ball. Rodriguez is just behind. Two big fellas in the air. David Peach, good shot. Oh, what a powerful drive. How well Luton caught out there by the lethal left foot of David Peach. Incredible stuff. The man who scored the penalty in the 11th minute gets Southampton's goal in the 40th minute. 2-0. What a powerful drive. They were looking for marking men. They were looking for McCallyog. The powerfully hit drive and Barber well beat. West on his left, Buckley. Nice turn by Lily Fuschillo. Alan West. In goes Husband. He's down. It's not a penalty and more protest. But Fuschillo's going to be in trouble if he don't watch out. Well, that looked more of a case for debate. And as the ball was thrust forward by West husband goes in he's brought down it seems but the referee had a very good view of it and said play on and well won again by Deans Blythe and uh, Chambers gets it Once again, the ability of Deans and Chambers going through. The bounce seems to have beaten Blythe and him, but the back heel, the flick, and Montgomery is beaten, and it's 2 1. Rodriguez, McDougal nicely touched the side to Shannon eventually from Holmes. He's got Peach here. McCallion goes over to help him. Away goes Peach. That was West. And there's Buckley. But still Williams can get it. And there's a goal from McDougal. And Luton were left wide open, I'm sorry to say, by the challenge that didn't come off by Alan West. When McCallion got the ball over there on the left, Peach made a good run. The pass straight forward, West couldn't get it, and from then on they were in trouble. Buckley backheaded, Williams got it back, and McDougall knocked it in for his fourth goal for Southampton in five league games. Up goes Price, beaten in fact by Waldron, and here's Williams. Holmes is there. That's through the ranks, and he's onside. McDougal is on his left. It's a lovely chip. Oh, it's a fine goal. Well, we got a very good view of that. And so did they. Well, that one coming all the way out of the Southampton defence. A good header by Waldron. Williams did well, and a good supporting run by Holmes. He caught the defence square, he was on his own, he took his time and scored beautifully. That's time on the programme for your letters. What about this one here from Joe Motola of 55 Sandringham Road, Sandringham, Melbourne in Australia. 
He says, I've heard of George Best scoring six goals in one match with Manchester United, so I've got the signatures of just a few of my friends who would like to see this great feat. We're all students of Hyatt High School, the majority of us being in Form 5. A whole list of names there, and 1,000 pleases <laughs> as well. How can we refuse it? So here's the day then that George Best scored six goals for Manchester United in a cup tie at Northampton. Dixie McNeil. Oh, yeah. Perrin forward for Kidd. In the middle is Morgan and Best. Book could lose it, it's Best! Georgie Best! Perrin through for Best. Here he goes again. Georgie Best! Willie Morgan coming over to help Kidd now. And a chance for Best, here's the hat-trick. There it is eventually. Kid again. His best. Number four. Georgie Best. Just the tiniest touch. Burns. Right in action right away. Best going through the middle. He's on for five. There it is. Here's Crerand. Best. Here's the record. There it is. Georgie Best. Sets a new scoring record for Manchester United. An unforgettable day where Manchester United won 8-2. You may have noticed, too, that George Best's last goal was made for him there by his number four, Pat Crerand, now, ironically, the manager of Northampton Town. And you may remember, too, that a few weeks ago we covered the third division match between uh, Brighton and Hove Albion and Crystal Palace. Well, George Morley of 53 Dudley Road, Eastbourne in Sussex, has sent me a very interesting postcard indeed. And this is it. This was... Uh, the Brighton crowd, when they played Crystal Palace, look at that, at Hove on Christmas Day, 1919. In fact, they've all got hats on, as you can see. We only spotted one lady in the crowd, and Jerry Francis thought he spotted a couple of his teammates as well. Is that right, Jerry? Yes, that's right, Brian. Frank McClinton and David Webb right at the front there. <laughs> <laughs> They're there as well. So quite a contrast there from the uh, sort of crowd that we saw, in fact, down at the Goldstone ground just a few weeks ago. And the headgear. Well, there are a few caps there. But uh, they're crowded in there nicely. But I must say, I like the look of that old uh, crowd there, 1919. George can't remember what the score was. He's 79 now, but he can still remember that that game was played on Christmas morning and he got home too late for his Christmas dinner. Well, our last game today brings together Leicester City and Arsenal. Arsenal's last visit to the Midlands, in fact, being mid in midweek. And it was very unproductive indeed because they were beaten 5-1 by Aston Villa at Villa Park. But now they move on to Filbert Street at Leicester, where ATV's cameras were in attendance. The commentator is Hugh Johns with Leicester City in the dark shirts. Talent ball now for Arsenal. Armstrong going against Rofe with Alderson in support. Looking in for Brady. No, it was Stapleton, sorry. Frank Stapleton. Oh, yes, one nothing. Oh, that was so easy and so simple. Six minutes gone. Mark Wellington beat. Nice little bit of football by Geordie Armstrong. Came away from his two markers. The chip in. Stapleton on the end of it. 1-0 Arsenal. Story taking his time about setting this one forward. Aiming for McDonald. Sims, a very good challenge in the air. Worthington down. Whoops. Brady removing Worthington's legs. Whitworth then. Wellington chasing it in. Rimmer was there and rushed into the net by Waller and the goal is given. Keith Waller gets it. Rimmer doesn't like it. And that's what Leicester feel about it. Tally Ho and Waller was the man sounding the hunting horn there. Ball up in the air. Rimmer seemed to have it. Worthington challenged him. As it drops down, Weller is the man who gets on the end of it. Good ball out of Brady, took up a good position, and Armstrong is offering him a pass on this side. In for ball. Oh, and that was a good try by Alan Ball. Nice 
ball from Brady to Armstrong. Good cross. Alan Ball over the top of it. Heading it down. Beating the diving Wellington, but also beating the far post. Liam Brady. Reaching for McDonald. Whitworth knocks it out. Not too well, though. To Ross. Stapleton. Good header by Lee. Willer, a miss kick. A bit fortunate. Chase now. Earl against Howard. Looking up, wanting support. It's a foul. Obstruction by Pat Howard. Keith Weller, number seven, will uh, be ready to take the free kick as Leicester pile up the troops on the far post. Worthington, Lee, Samuels, Alderson, all over there. Steve Earl is far post side of the penalty spot. out for the charge of the 7th Cavalry as Weller triggers this one into the box. And in they go, and there's the goal from Steve Earl. Very similar goal to the one that Stapleton scored. He wasn't marked tight. It's 2-1, Leicester. Three minutes into the second half. The free kick given when uh, Howard impeded Steve Earl. Steve Earl punishes them. Weller's free kick in. And Earl just plants it firmly into the net. The rain driving down across the ground now. Big rainbow in the sky way above us. There it is. John Samuels. And that'll drop down for Armstrong. Now Ross. Brady. Chip in for Stapleton. Didn't get quite enough deflection on it. Nice move, though. Signifies... Worthington. Good ball, all of a sudden breaking clear. Matthews number five, and his cross was too early in. Alderson again. Has a look in for Worthington. Looks for a shooting angle. Chip for Weller. Yes! 3-1, Keith Weller's second goal of the game. Leicester fans enraptured by the... Punchy drive of football then. The ball fed in from Alderson, and it was all geared up then for Worthington. A little bit of tip tap, knocks a good ball in, and it was Weller's determination that went in. Wide left side and drove it into the net. So Brady, oh, and the ball given back to Earl. From Brady. Worthington across the box. Is Earl going on his own? Super save from Rimmer. Still on for Alderson. And ball. And ball by Brady. That was foolish. Should be Brady, the man who gave it away. So two disasters in inside a minute by Brady. Because it was his ball back that set Earl on his way. Rimmer forced to make a great save when the ball comes across from Alderson. Brady handles it. So now. Are they going to give Weller the chance to get his hat-trick, or is Worthington going to score? No, they're going to give it to Worthington. There it is, four. And goal again, Worthington stretches his run to four in a row. Penalty struck with real professional car. Arsenal beaten, and that's it. Don't forget the big match, though, next Sunday afternoon, when we shall again have three top matches for you. Mind you, I suppose we should be lucky if we get another goal as good as Stan Bowles is yesterday, though you never know. At any rate, the cry of Bowles for England is getting louder, but the man himself clearly believes that his actions must speak louder than any words. Masson continuing his run. Jeff Clark only half-stopping him. Here's Bowles. Four. Bowles. Yes, getting away nicely. Bowles, past one, past another. Not onto that left foot, surely. Well, that was bound for the goal, except that it hit John Hollins. And Bowles onside. Sivers come roaring out of his goal. Now, what will Bowles do? Onto the left foot, he'll hope. No, onto the right foot. That's there. That's two. 